Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here, and here I've got a point plotted in 3D space. If I start from the origin and I count one unit in the x direction, and four units in the y direction, and two units in the z direction going up, I arrive at my point. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that this is the point 1, 4, 2, I'm going to call it P, and if instead of thinking of 1, 4, 2 as a point, we think about the straight line path traveling from the origin to the point 1, 4, 2, then that's the idea of a vector in 3D space. Here we're calling our vector V, and you can see sort of a one-sided arrow notation above it, which tells us we're talking about a vector. When we write a vector, instead of writing its components in parentheses like we do with a point, we actually write them in angled brackets. So when we see these angled brackets, this can give us another context clue that we're talking about a vector. So it's important to remember that the point 1, 4, 2 is kind of a different object than the vector 1, 4, 2. Another big difference between a point and a vector is that if I move the point 1, 4, 2 to another location, I slide it to some other point in R3, I do a translation of that point, then it's no longer the point 1, 4, 2. It has some other coordinates that make it a different point. If I take the vector 1, 4, 2 and move its initial point off of the origin to some other location, I translate it somewhere else in 3D space, it's actually still the vector 1, 4, 2. In other words, that object still travels one unit in the x direction, four in the y direction, and two in the z direction from its beginning point to its ending point, from start to finish. So points are location specific in 3D space, but vectors are not. It's a big difference there. Sometimes instead of naming a vector just a single letter like V or W, we'll be a little more descriptive and we'll call the vector something like PQ as we have here. If we have the vector notation over PQ, this tells us that our vector starts at point P and ends at point Q in space. In this case, my vector traveling from P to Q, if you can kind of see from my picture, maybe approximate, it goes two units in the X direction, six units in the Y, and down two units in the Z direction. So my vector PQ here is actually two, six, negative two. The vector QP also uses these same points, but because of the order listed in the name of the vector, Q then P, this vector actually starts at Q and ends at P. Traveling all of these quantities in the reverse directions means that its coordinates will actually be negative two, negative six, positive two, all exactly opposite. So we can see that changing the direction of a vector gives us a different vector. We see that 2, 6, negative 2 and negative 2, negative 6, 2 are not the same thing here. Whenever we want to find a vector between two known points, we can always take the terminal point, which is the ending point, and subtract the initial point, or the starting point. Let's do a couple of examples of finding a vector between two points. So if we're given the points p, which is 5, 1, negative 3, Q, which is the point negative 1, 4, 6, and R, which is the point negative 2, 1, 2. Our first one here is asking us to find the vector PQ. So in other words, we are taking simply our terminal point, Q, minus our initial point, P, for each coordinate. So what we'll have here is we'll have negative 1 minus our P first coordinate, which was 5. Comma. Now remember we're using angled brackets because these are vectors. So our second coordinate will have q minus p again, which will be 4 minus 1 is our y coordinate there for p. And then for our z coordinate, we'll have the terminal z coordinate minus the initial z coordinate, which is negative 3. And so doing terminal point minus initial point then we can see here that we get the vector negative 1 minus 5 will be negative 6. 4 minus 1 is obviously 3. Here this will be like addition, so 6 plus 3 actually gives us positive 9. So our vector PQ is actually negative 6, positive 3, positive 9. If we look at the next one here, this is vector PR. So our initial point is now P and our terminal point is R. So we will take our R coordinates here, so we have negative 2, and we'll subtract our initial coordinate, which is 5. 
Here we'll have one for our y-coordinate minus our initial y-coordinate here, which is also one. For our z-component of our vector, we'll have our r-coordinate, which is two, minus our p-coordinate, which is negative three. And so now we'll just say what each component is. So we have negative two minus five, that'll give us negative seven. For our x-component, one minus one will give us zero. And 2 plus 3 here will give us 5. So we'll actually get a vector PR being negative 7, 0, positive 5. One thing besides direction that's important about a vector is how long the vector is. The word we use to describe the length of a vector is the magnitude. We use these brackets here to denote the magnitude of a vector. They look like double absolute value brackets almost. So this here is saying the magnitude of vector v. And finding the magnitude of a vector is very similar to how we find distance since the magnitude of a vector is really just the distance between its endpoints, right? So for magnitude, we'll simply square each component of the vector We'll add all of those up, and then we'll take the square root, much like we do in the distance formula in 3D space. Let's do a few examples where we find magnitudes of vectors. So I've got my formula down here. Remember this says the magnitude of vector v. We just simply square each component of the vector, add them up, and take the square root. Our first vector here is 3, 2, 6. So our magnitude of vector v is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 6 squared. So that will give us the square root of 9 plus 4 plus 36. That will then give us the square root of 49, and it turns out this vector is exactly 7 units long. It has magnitude 7. Here with vector w, we've got some fractions going on, so our magnitude of vector w will actually be the square root of 1 half squared plus 5 halves squared plus negative 7 halves squared. So if we square each of these, we'll get 1 over 4 plus 25 over 4 plus 49 over 4. Now we'll add all these together, so we're just adding the tops, 49 and 1 is 50, add the 25, you'll get 75, so we get the square root of 75 over 4. Now we can go ahead and break this up into two separate pieces and think of this as root 75 over root 4. I think we definitely know root 4, right? So this answer here is going to be 2, and actually, there's a perfect square that goes evenly into 75, right? 25 goes in, so I could pull out the square root of 25. And 25 times 3 gives us 75, so we would actually have a 3 left over inside. So we have 5 root 3 over 2 as our magnitude for vector w. Let's look at our last one here, magnitude of vector u here. Our u vector is 2 thirds comma negative 1 third comma negative 2 thirds. So our magnitude of vector u, in this case, we'll have the square root of 2 thirds squared plus negative 1 third squared plus negative 2 thirds squared. These are all squared, so those negatives don't matter too much, right? Jump down just a little bit here. So I would actually get the square root of 4 over 9 plus 1 over 9 plus 2 thirds squared, but it's negative. It still ends up being a positive 4 ninths like the first one did. We get 4 ninths plus 1 ninth plus 4 ninths. 4 plus 1 plus 4 is 9. We actually get the square root of 9 over 9, which is the square root of 1, which turns out is just 1, right? So the length of vector u, it turns out here, is just 1. And we have a video coming up pretty soon in our Calculus 3 video series here that talks about vectors with a length of 1. We give those a special name. We call them unit vectors. So you can check that video out later in our series. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.